Hey guys. So my wife Ava and I have been visiting her hometown in Italy. We're about to head back to the States, but before we left, I wanted to share with you one of the strangest and yet most beautiful experiences I've ever had here. It's the story of a feast. A feast unlike any of the other many, 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 many other feasts that I've experienced here. But in order to tell this story, I first need to explain a little bit about my daily routine here. So I'm usually the first person to wake up. After heavily caffeinating myself, I walk up the street to the gym. Well, it's not really a gym. Desaad doesn't have a gym. My gym is a house, sort of. So this house has belonged to the family of Ava's dad, AKA Salvatore, AKA Papaturi, AKA Il Professore, for untold generations. I hate to use the word abandoned to describe it, but no one has lived here for a very long time. The house mostly serves two functions now. First of all, it's where I work out in the morning. And secondly, it's where Papaturi conducts his culinary experiments. In the basement, Papa Turi has his food workshop where he makes all kinds of amazing stuff. He has equipment for bottling tomato sauce, giant vats of olive oil, and his precious, precious pecorino cheese. More on that later. There's one other thing in the basement that I've always wondered about for a really long time. So long, in fact, that you can check out this story I published on Instagram on March 13 of 2021. And then lastly, there are these rather giant um, pots and uh, burners and everything. And I've been told that soon I will see what those are for, uh, but I don't really know yet. So stay tuned. I never got my answer as to what the big pot is for. Now I've seen similar pots used here for things like making ricotta, making tomato sauce, even making enormous quantities of pasta. But Ava always insisted that this pot was for something else. I hadn't thought about the pot in a really long time until one day, my morning routine was suddenly interrupted by the appearance of Papa Turi himself. He said he was going to go to the gym with me. I had no idea why, but I was right when I guessed that he wasn't looking to work out. Turns out he had been up already for quite some time assembling an enormous quantity of meat. My ability to speak Italian is definitely improving, but I have to be honest that before the coffee kicks in, I'm pretty much useless. I didn't understand a word he was saying. When you watch this next clip, imagine my face just being like, Allora, la prima cosa che bisogna fare, lavare adesso il grasso e mettere sul fornellone mettere sul fornellone un po' di acqua calda e poi mettere subito il grasso per farlo cuocere That's when we heard the sound of a vehicle approaching Buongiorno Gianni Good morning how do I describe the kind of person Johnny is? Cosa bevevano i nostri nonni? Vino, 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 vino. Cosa bevevano i nostri padri? Vino, 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 E noi che figli siamo, beviamo, beviamo. E noi che figli siamo, beviamo, beviamo, beviamo. E siete e mezzo. E siete e mezzo. E a che ora ci dobbiamo arrivare? A Pepe. Oh, I quickly need to explain that when I'm in Dessa, my name isn't Harper, it's Giuseppe, or Pepe for short. That's a whole other story for another time, but just know that in the rest of the video, I'm Pepe. E a che ora ci dobbiamo arrivare? A Pepe. E siamo Pepe. Tre minuti, tre minuti. No, no, tu hai mangiato. No, no. Un grasso, non mi piace. Allora, come c'è un po' grasso? Eh. I had no idea what was happening. All I knew was that a gas burner had been set up on the balcony. And then Johnny went back downstairs to get the pot. 
About the time Papa Chody was filling the pot up with water, Ava finally showed up. Oh, ciao. Maybe you can help me understand what's going on. No, Ava didn't at all help me understand what was going on. She just rolled up her sleeves and got to work. This is a fat. <laughs> it's all fat and now uh, it needs to be washed. And who will wash? Johnny started urgently looking for something. I didn't know what until I was asked to fetch it. Alpero, call Frank and go and get some soap. Oh, Franco. Eh, yeah, this. Ho bisogno del sale. Eh, vieni con me che va a dai. Oh, Franco is Johnny's brother. Grazie mille, Franco. Wow. Is this okay? Yes, this is okay. By the time I got back, the water was hot enough to add the pork fat into the pot. So what, can you just sort of, what, what, what happens? What's happening? It's happening that the first thing, the first step is to put the fat that we washed in the hot <sighs> water. So I start to boil and then create the sauce for our meat. Now I have a little disclaimer to make. The food you are about to see is not for the faint of heart. It is not made to be pretty for a Food Network segment. It also might not look like much, but in the words of Johnny, <laughs> But I don't say from gusto. Ah. So stick with me, it's worth it. Now Eva went back inside to keep washing meat, this time pork skin. We have all, we know also which pig we are going to eat. The name of this is Fritoli. Fritoli. Wait, like Frito Lays. Frijoles. No, Frito Lays. I don't know what it is. Ribs? The same, ribs. Are we basically just going to cook an entire pig today? More or less. Now what is the left hour of the pig? Albert, this is the way in which in Calabria we use part of the pork pig that usually goes to waste. But because we don't like to waste anything, we cook them. I see. So this is like, these are like the rib bones, but stripped of meat. Yes, yeah, so with just a little bit of meat. Because mm -hmm. things that this should be the leftover of a pig after you made the salami, the prosciutto, and all the rest. Johnny then told me that what I was seeing was actually a very scaled down version of whatever this was. <laughs> Then Ava's mom, aka Mama Rosa, showed up. Cos'è? Pane. Ah. Hey, finalmente. She quickly left again, muttering something about needing more bread. The only thing that's in here is fat and water, and it already smells really amazing. It's hard to describe the smell. It's quite enchanting, though. Is this a specifically Calabrian tradition, or is this done in other parts of Italy? <laughs> As long as I know, it's just a crazy Calabrian tradition. Well, maybe there are other crazy Italians that they do the same. Johnny started cutting up bigger chunks of meat for Ava to add into the pot. I think these are ham hocks? 
Is that right? Ham hocks? That seems right. It seems like the kind of thing you add into a brewing cauldron. This is the smell of a festa. It just kept coming more and more ham hocks and ribs, never ending meat. I started to wonder if the pot was actually big enough to hold all the meat we had. The salt I got was finally put to use. I started to worry that I hadn't bought enough though. Mama Rosa showed up again, and sure enough, with more bread. Sono tre chili e mezzo. Oh. Kiss the mice. Che cazzo ha fatto? Ecco. Kiss the mice. Un chilo di mice. Meanwhile, Johnny was prepping the pork skin. Allora, questo. Perché non tutte le cembelle riescono col buco? Ah, come cazzo? This went into the mix, tied up on string so it could be pulled out easily again later on. Now, Eva, Johnny, and Papa Turi started setting up tables. You know, because I told you at the beginning that this is a story about a feast. But remember, I didn't know at all what was happening. I didn't even know a feast was in the works. But I started to get a clue when not only the quantity of tables, but the size of those tables started to increase. Uh, how many people are coming over? 20. 20. I really shouldn't have been too surprised because big feasts tend to happen at least once a week, usually for the Holy Sunday lunch. You can see why I work out every day here. Speaking of which, before we kick off the feast, a quick word from today's video sponsor. When it comes to sticking to our fitness goals, we all wanna be disciplined and motivated all the time. That's hard, particularly when you have things in your life going on out of the ordinary. Like maybe you're traveling and you have a very inideal place to work out makes it hard to keep going. That's why Ava and I love Future. Future is a new fitness app that pairs you with your very own highly credentialed fitness coach. Depending on your individual goals and needs, they'll come up with an entire custom workout plan for you. They'll monitor your progress. They'll make sure it fits with your schedule. And most importantly, they'll keep you accounted and motivated. I've never given up on a workout since signing up. I've already talked on the channel about my trainer, Tyler, and I told him, look, I'm gonna be in Italy for a little while. I don't have a good space to work out in. I have very rudimentary equipment. I'm also going to be living with Mama Rosa, whose entire goal in life is to fatten me up. What can you do? He came up with a special plan tailored just for my needs here. It's all centered around being able to use very limited equipment, no matter what kind of equipment you have access to, whether it's an entire fully stocked gym or absolutely nothing at all. Futures coaches can work with you and make sure that you meet your goals. Ava and I can't recommend Future enough for both paying customers, we love it. If you wanna give it a shot totally risk-free, you can get your first month for free by going to tryfuture.co slash pastagrammer. First month for free, I promise you'll love it. A big thank you to Future for sponsoring today's video. With the table set up for 20 Italians, we mostly just waited around for the meat to cook. To pass the time, Papa Turi decided it was time for an aperitivo of his beloved, beloved cheese. You need to understand that this cheese is his pride and joy. He buys these wheels of fresh pecorino cheese from the local cheesemaker, and he seasons the outside himself with pepperoncino and olive oil, and then he ages them until they become insanely strong. It's like the jet fuel moonshine of cheese. He only makes a few wheels every year, so it's only on very special occasions that he breaks some out. You have to make a mouse, no? Mm-hmm. It was Mickey Mouse, when I was orange, in America, Mickey Mouse, when I was orange. Yeah, that was orange. Uh, that's not a peanut. <laughs> you had some Mickey Mouse. Mmm. Va bene. On a one way. Just a day book. Mmm. It is quite simply the best cheese I've ever had in my life. As we all know, an aperitivo isn't complete without a drink. Oh, si, oh, si, oh, si. Hoi, hoi, hoi. Okay. Allora, yo, si, oh, si, oh, si. Although it needed to cook longer, it was finally time to start tasting the meat.
The only thing that was added was a little bit of lemon juice. It's amazing what just some water, some salt, and some lemon does, and some pork fat. Also some pork fat. Finally, people started showing up. Tazia. <laughs> Most of the guests brought either more food or alcohol or some combination of both. What's that? Gin, vodka, brood, spritz, aperol, chiode de garofano. And hardly any of them could wait to start eating. Soon everyone was seated and Ava started serving out the first course, pasta al forno. You know, because a giant cauldron of meat isn't enough food. Speaking of that giant cauldron, I finally learned what this bizarre Calabrian dish is called. So this is what we call in the sapropuna, which means that it's all the leftover when you kill a pig. And then we boil them for a long time. And just with a drop of lemon, we eat and we enjoy. And this is a traditional dish that we make every time that we kill a pig. The meat was served just as it was. No sauce, no condiments, just meat and lemon juice. I know that probably a lot of you are scoffing at such a simple dish. I would have too, until I smelled and tasted it. Ah. <laughs> Propuna turns out to be more than just boiled meat, which is what it looks like. It's kind of like certain types of Mexican carnitas that begin with the meat boiling, but then actually as the water evaporates, it ends up kind of just cooking in its own fat. The fat thickens and coats the meat. It's almost like a sauce. It's not diet food to be sure, but it is delicious food. It's always the simple food that tastes the best. And trust me, there was a reason why these 20 Calabrians were so excited about this one dish. The feast wasn't over with the propuna though. You can't have a Calabrian party without copious amounts of sugar. There were madalene, necatole, which are these fried Calabrian cookies. There was some kind of shoe that was stuffed with like a lemon cream, really delicious. Ooh. 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 A pistacchio panettone for good measure. And my personal favorite, cannoli. Ooh. There was barely room on the tables for everything. Now, some attentive viewers might have noticed that despite the fact that this whole propuna dish is meant to use leftovers, there's still quite a bit of stuff in that pot. After everyone ate, the second round of cooking began. Under the careful supervision of Zia Maria, all of the excess water was boiled off, and then all the like, the fat and the little bits of meat that were left were all skimmed off and put into containers and then left to like, you know, coagulate and cool until they became, it's not really lard, it's called salimuri. One of the best ways to eat it is you spread it on a loaf of Calabrian uh, pita bread and then bake it in the oven until it's just steaming hot and the fat all melts. My doctor might not be thrilled about the cholesterol, but it was so delicious and absolutely worth dying a year early for. In the very end, every single drop Every morsel from that pot was used. Remember, this tradition began as a way to extract every last possible bite of food out of a precious animal. But what's incredible is that the people here learned not to treat this as a subsistence measure or a grim necessity, but as a joyous occasion. They've taken the poorest, simplest food you can possibly imagine, turned it into a delicious dish, and a party at the same time. Ava's family lives with the rest of us in the 21st century. They don't need to save every molecule of meat from pork bones in order to survive anymore, but they still keep this tradition alive because it's fun and yummy. 
I think that's cool, and I think it's a philosophy of eating that a lot of us would benefit from trying again. It's how all of our ancestors ate, it's how an enormous number of people around the globe still have to eat, and even though it might be great that we have the luxury of not needing to eat this way anymore, maybe we're missing out on something by not voluntarily doing it. I hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at this strange but very, very fun Calabrian tradition. More importantly, I hope it inspires you to gather up some people and cook something together. Speaking of which, a quick shout out to a pasta grammarian in action, or I should say pasta grammarians in action. Jackie sent us this picture of her family. These are her kids. They're making ravioli together. Nothing makes us happier than seeing families cook together. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Follow us on social media at Pasta Grammar. You might catch little story updates like the one from March 13, 2021, and you can follow along as mysteries develop and progress. It happens all the time. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Ciao.